sauna basically is uh, it helps to recuperate, uh, you know, from stress. Uh, it helps the body heal from any kind of sickness and basically generates uh, positive health. Have you tried it yourself? Oh yeah, I own one of those. Oh really? I have, uh, I bought mine in 2006 and I still use it to this day. How I use it maybe how about two, three it? times a day. Oh really? Every day. Okay. Yeah, it's really you good. see a difference every day? Oh, 100%, no doubt. That's why I usually tell people to go inside first. Yeah. Then, if they have any questions to ask later. Because then that way they get their own exposure and they immediately start to say, why do I feel good? Let's yeah. try it then. Yeah, jump right in. Yeah. I think that one, uh, we have a new one. out of Colorado and we make comfort food to feed the soul and the stomach and, and everyone else's smiles. Where did you get your uh, recipes, your ideas? Uh, Keshava, who's not here right now, he's down in Envision. We're doing both that event and this, this event. He's, he's the brains behind the whole operation. But basically the idea was like just to have a very uh, grounded healthy meal so we can continue to just keep celebrating and not really get bogged down. There isn't really a lot of uh, vegan choices out there and a lot of it has to do with like stuff that is like mostly tofu or in this way we're doing a lot of cashews, it's a very different type of ingredient and so we make things like our uh, soul bowl which is just a very basic but very delicious uh, rice and beans and vegetables with our ranch dressing which is cashews and same with the nachos with the vegan queso, we have vegan cheesecake and um, other stuff and then we also open up a brand new booth called Nacho Fish Tacos and basically we make a cauliflower fish taco so it's a, a cauliflower uh, with gluten free breading and we use our ranch dressing with that and we also just within the last month just started jarring our uh, quesos and ranches and so we're trying to get them into stores and we have them in a few stores in Denver right now we're just expanding it we're just happy to be here thank you very much yeah thank you, thank you. Right now. Hey, um, what's so going on? Where do, you, where do you get your ideas for your art? Um, our brand, it's, uh, well, it's all my own artwork, so the, the vision behind it is cultivating conscious minds. And uh, basically, we want to remind people to stay conscious in a society that's very driven by social media, telling you, you know, stereotypes and ideals. And so, yeah, be free and have your own you know, mentality and mindset. Right. Yeah, so um, a very message driven design. Let me show you some stuff. Here. Sure. Oh, uh, we have the seeker. Uh, people love this one, the gold digger. <laughs> gold digger. And then, uh, don't gain the world and lose your soul. Wisdom's better than silver and gold. So, yeah. And of course, a lot of uh, imagery and artwork that I did myself. Um, it's more symbolism. This is uh, the infinite design. It reminds people to be boundless. That's why the arrows are going in every direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're being more grounded. More grounded, grounded, to be grounded. And they're not bound by any you know, box or you know, constraint. It's, it's, it's my play on the infinity symbol. Basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, yeah, we also draw a lot of inspiration from nature. Um, and 
know, just crescent moons, the lunar lotus. So, yeah, just a lot of hand drawn artwork, and um, it's basically myself in, uh, in art and insurance. No, I really like your and art. So, I you go out around other vendor, uh, other events? And... Yeah, we've been to, um, we sell at Yoga Work Studios, so mm -hmm. we, we're heavily tied to, I guess, the mentality behind a lot of people that practice yoga and meditate. Yeah. So, we've done the Disclosure Mass Meditation Festival, Bhakti is a great yoga festival, mm -hmm. and of course, like more mainstream you know, music festivals, Coachella. Uh, and um, yeah, anywhere that's creativity and art, you know, we'll find it. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. And your name again? My name is Richard. Yeah. And thank the brand's called Neo Classics. Neo Classics. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Alright, cool. So we are an initiative and community-based nonprofit platform. So we, we deal with our initiatives. So in these brochures, which are our new thing, this is our new initiative, the Starseed Initiative, it's our children's initiative. Um, we have our clean air initiative, which is tree plantings, forest restoration. We have our, our beach and river cleanup initiatives. Um, again, that's pretty it's cut and dry. Um, and then we have our mass meditation initiative, um, which is our festival. Mm -hmm. So we basically just uh, we are a nonprofit, community initiative-based platform, and we just work on these initiatives um, to get people together as a community, um, resonating in heart frequency and uh, being of service. And that's kind of what we kind of do. We're having to start to have chapters open up in multiple cities and countries. Mm -hmm. right. So we're in like five cities in three countries now. Okay. And so these are people just taking their own initiative to start these these, these, uh, these, these initiatives. They just bring their community together, right. you know, to be of service and you know raise their vibration and frequency. So what what is your um, greatest challenge in this this uh, project? In this project, yes, I would say not wanting to reach so many people and do so much at one time. I mean, there's so much we're trying to do here and so much messages to share. I would say that like, just learning to balance all the people that want to come together and share that information and share that wisdom and knowledge and really be able to support that across the country. This is the third year it's been going on. So the first year, there's about three to 4,000 people that showed up to the Mass Meditation Initiative in LA. The second year, 10,000 people. This year, we're expecting 20 to 30,000. Why do so, you think uh, people are so in tune by this, yeah. this uh, initiative? This, uh, Why they're so in tune? Yeah. It's a divine calling. You know, they they hear it, they feel it, um, they hear the message, the call, the and it's just their response that really is there to learn about what what we have to share at this platform it's just divinely guided so mm -hmm. that's, that's well, can you tell me a little bit about some of the projects you've done the, the, the... yeah well myself I do a lot of the goddess work so I hold space in a space called goddesses of Gaia village um, you know this is where we teach women and men how to heal themselves on a divine feminine and divine masculine balance mm -hmm. um, different workshops, different wisdom holds. We have a tea lounge, um, we have herb roll smoke blends, and we talk about herbs and why they're good for us. And so that's something I've been pretty present to. Um, I do a lot of that, but then also just talking about talking about the balance of the sacred masculine and feminine um, amongst the energies that are moving through us. Yeah, it's really important that we really start waking up to all the energies and the movements that are happening because the more we wake up the more that we're conscious and we're present and aware to the conversations we have those words those synchronicities that pop up in our daily basis those inquiries of oh what is this and to actually follow that intention mm -hmm. that is your higher consciousness that is your higher self guiding you to the right thing right whether it's this platform or any other conscious platform like just really support people to dive in deep and like inquire within and operate from a heart center and just share that connection and community because that's how the world is going to heal Thank you so much. Thank you. Many blessings.
Look at this. The origin of the figure is six meters high, 6,000 years old. This continues all over the world. This is in Australia. The so-called gods were always represented with helmets, with helos, with rays around their heads. Now, this again, Australia. You all realize that between Australia, between North America, Hopi territory, between South America, Nazca, Peru, between the Sahara Desert, are thousands and thousands of kilometers. There are oceans, and in our prehistoric time, our forefathers had no contact together. You could not just book a fly over there to Las Vegas. So why have they represented their gods all in the same manner, with helmets and halos around their head? In the far future, he will return again. And in order not to forget his visit, they represent every year this heavenly teacher in the form of a straw garment, straw man, with no opening for mouth or ears, etc. He was a teacher from the sky. Now, if we have such a thing only in North America, the hope is now, it's worldwide. So what do we need more about all these things? They were here, and we have the reports practically in every culture. I don't understand why this is so complicated to understand it. Why our scientific community, especially our archaeologists and ethnologists, they are so blind, they cannot see it, or they don't know it. I love discussions with skeptics. It's wonderful, because they lose anyhow. anyhow. It doesn't matter. But I love the discussions, and when we respect each other, when we are not lying and bluffing and discussing honestly, after two hours, they always confess to me, Eric, we didn't know that. We never hear about these books. We never hear the word of Enoch or Ezekiel or anything. We don't know it. As soon as we know it, it all fits together. The cave paintings, the figures, the old writings, and all these things here, the pyramid itself. Later, the pyramid was constructed over the room. The room existed a long time before. And there was this uh, bottom plate, three meter 80 long, two meter 20 large, one block. And on the plate, an incredible uh, drawing. You will just see it something like a frame in the center of the frame, someone sitting, bending forward, almost like a motorizing cyclist. He has an oxygen mask on his nose. He uses his upper hand, you will just see it here, his upper hands to manipulate control. With the lower hands, you still see the four fingers. He's winding up something. He's sitting on a chair. And outside of the frame, so much shice and safety. Outside of the frame, you see a linking flame. Now, this was found in 1952. Of course, archaeology had immediately their explanation, archaeological explanation. They said it represents Pakal. Pakal was the second last uh, ruler of the city of Palenque. <coughs> Pakal is sitting in the open mouth of a mythological monster, you see. What do you see here? These two things here. They see the teeth, the upper teeth, and the lower teeth. That's the open mouth of a mythical monster. Pakal is falling into the monster. Out of his body comes the tree of life, the cross of life, etc., etc. Now NASA analyzed phrase by phrase of Ezekiel. They start to make designs and they start to make calculations. And finally, they had the object. Just by the it. And this was what it looked like. This is what Ezekiel called the splendorness of the highest. So the whole thing, the totality, is the splendorness of the highest. The idea comes from Ezekiel. <laughs> now, when you read Ezekiel, you will realize that Ezekiel describes the splendorness of the highest, this object, from chapter 1 to 40. And in chapter 41, something different happened. He says, the splendorness of the highest arrived again. That means a second time. This space shuttle was descending a second time to Ezekiel. And this time, Ezekiel right, the hand of the highest took me on my chest and put me on the chair. In my modern interpretation, simply he was taken up to the co-pilot's seat. So they are flying over this uh, little city, and beneath them is something like a temple. 
and the splendor of the highest, and it's Your body is the ass. My painting is uh, always uh, processing, always something new, always something that I try to complete myself, right? So, like example, this painting that I'm going to show you uh, is uh, about Mother Earth. Uh, you know, the roots, they are growing to the vine, the vine is transforming. And when we start to understand nature, that is our nature, mm -hmm. uh, we love, we start to transform, to get free. The, the butterfly means the freedom in this process that we are having, you know. Uh, but first we need to know ourselves, to, to that makes it happen. Because if we don't face our shadows, if we don't face our demons, we cannot transform. So you need to be more grounded before you take the next step. Yes, yeah, yeah, you have to, Start for the basic, start to know yourself, 
and everything. And that's when I start to to have the blessing to put it in canvas. So that's why I want to people to 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 share that feeling that I have in my process. And I put it in canvas, and I know it's only mine. It's a lot of people is uh, getting in this process, you know. So. Right. Uh, when I do it for myself, I know I'm doing for somebody else yeah, yeah. too. Yeah. So basically, this painting, I show you this painting because this have uh, all the elements, you know, what we call the good and the bad, the, the day and the night, I have all the elements. But you know, like uh, also this painting, I call this painting the El Brujo. Mm -hmm. And it's transforming the emotional, because what are some emotions, feelings? That's transforming all the emotional uh, stuff, all the feelings, in something new and some magic, you know, something that you can handle it. Also, the, the moon uh, is very related to the to the emotions, to the feelings. So everything is about transformation. Everything is about uh, ourselves. Yes. So basically, it's like that. And I'm painting. I'm getting these ideas, and I try to break canvas. Sometimes it's difficult to to really. Put it in canvas or to set in canvas something that uh, doesn't have words, you know, it's difficult sometimes. So sometimes I, I'm struggling to how I put this thing that I have in, in canvas. And sometimes it comes something really good, like this one. I love this one because it's a uh, uh, the, the name is Re Reflejo Eminente. And this is the, the, the higher reflection of yourself. You are becoming some something beautiful. You're becoming something with wings. You're becoming something that nobody can stop you. Whatever you want to approach or whatever you want to to do, you know. So wow. you know. that's quite beautiful. The painting shows how beautiful your dream, uh, your entity, your your imagination was able to uh, put that on canvas. Yes, uh, I know it's a reflection, and uh, the thing is, I start to know myself. Yeah. When I finish the painting, yeah. I start to know myself more. So that mean, may, uh, give me the confidence to, to keep going, you know. Even though uh, sometimes I know people like my painting, but sometimes they feel afraid. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't want to face the issues. Sometimes we are afraid to, uh, to uh, we are afraid to, uh, to to face that kind of the issues that all we have, you know. So. Yeah, to take the next step. Yes. Yeah, I can see that. Yes. I understand that. So tell me your website. What's uh... Uh, my website is alfredodavalos.com. www.alfredodavalos.com. And uh, you have a radio show, a podcast? Yeah, I do. I, do, um, I work with a, I have a program with the Euphonico Radio. And uh, it's only Fridays, 8 to 9, 30 p.m. Great. And we talk about uh, conscious life, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Good. Well, thank you very much for talking. To me. Well, it's been two years since I've interviewed you, and now we're back at the Conscious Life Expo of 2019. And I wanted to know, uh, can you tell us what's been going on since the last time we talked to you back in 2016? Uh, I've done a lot of TV shows, as you know, and uh, radio shows as well. Um, I feel there have been lots of changes in this country. And uh, people are becoming much more aware of what's going on and what's true or not. We are getting close to the Aquarian age, so everything that's dishonest and uh, not right is going to come out. And you can see that in politics, you know, all the women that are coming out and all that. I travel a lot, I've been to a lot of, uh, of uh, holy places as well including Fatima and uh, Bethlehem in Israel, which I love, and a lot of other places. And I have a funny story, if I may tell you, yeah. that was really funny. Last time I was in Fatima in Portugal, it was like in December last year, <laughs> and uh, 
we went to mass. What happens, you know, is that uh, I've been there many times, and there was there were all these English-speaking priests, but they were from Ireland or wherever. I've never seen an American priest over there. So what happens? We get there, and it's Father So and So from Kansas City, and then Father So and So from somewhere else. You know, oh my God, I've never seen this. So it was a service, and we stayed for the service. And when the priest is reading from the Bible, you know, a big, huge, the white dove comes down and lands on the on the table on the altar. I was, oh my God, where did that come from? And I looked at Lassa and right after, you know, stayed there for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and then he took off and he disappeared into the there. So that gave me hope that the world is changing for the better. And there is, I know it's very bad in Venezuela and all that, but it seems that it's coming to a point where we might be having some peace. And for me, that was very important. Um, besides that, unfortunately, I haven't written any more books because I've been so busy, because I have a big family. But eventually, I will try to do that. Wow, that's good news about how the world is changing for a better, better path. It doesn't mean it doesn't go west first and then get better, but there is hope here. Right, right. right. And, uh, I'm looking forward to a new book sometime in the near future. So. Actually, I have two half written, but I haven't had time to finish <laughs> them. <laughs> I got an interesting question to ask you: is um, what kind of questions are being asked of you when you travel around the world the last couple of years? When I travel around the world, people don't know I'm psychic for anything like that. But then I go to the holy places, I ask for some messages. Okay. And then I bring the messages over here, you know. And uh, I think it gives people some hope when they know they can fix it, when they can do things, you know. That's very good. But we all can help by being very positive, by putting things, you know, see how can I change this, how can it go. You know, what can I do? And also there are so many people that are so desperate. If you can help them a little bit, you know, that changes a lot. And for example, when, that's also an interesting, you know, I come from Houston. And we had Harvey, you know, the big hurricane that destroyed half of Houston. As soon as we heard that it was going to be Harvey, I wasn't there, I was somewhere else. I got stuck outside. I did a ceremony, spoke to some shamans in Hawaii, and we protected our streets, you know, with all the rain, you know, houses that were swimming away and all that, you know. We had perhaps one inch of rain on our street. That's, that's, a, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't make the miracle, you know. I, I just talked to some other people and we all said the pray, prayers and all that. And it was absolutely, and if you can do that, you know, you can help a lot of people. Because people have to stop being so selfish and it's not me, 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 me. You know, you have to take into consideration that there are people that need you more. Sometimes it's even a child or an older person that feels very lonely. And if you smile or when you go to the grocery store and I see an older person or standing up there for hours just to make eight or ten dollars an hour, you smile and you say something nice to them and that makes their day. You change the energy. Yeah, you do. You, you touch them. Yeah. Since we're at the Conscious Life Expo, I wanted to ask you, uh, one of the topics, popular topics here is uh, UFOs. It's what? UFOs. What do you think about that? Oh, of course. Um, when I lived, we lived in uh, Switzerland, they used to come, there was a big piece of land, you know, where the cows were in the summer, and there was a big uh, 
two FLs used to come, not in the summer because they would scare the cows, but in the winter they used to come and they used to come into our house. They were in all shapes and uh, they giggled a lot. They were funny actually. I have no idea what they said because I can't speak the language, but they were funny. They would look at us and even my children saw them and look at it. And I said about 10, 12 years ago, I said there is water in Mars. Everybody said I was crazy. Guess what? They found water in Mars. They sure did. And there is life in other planets, of course. I mean, they might not look like us, you know, but, and they might, because the problem is there is no water. Everybody says, I said, what about if they don't need water to survive? Perhaps they need, I don't know, oil or something, or wine? whatever it is that they need, perhaps they don't have the same needs as we do. Look at the fishes in the sea. You know, they can live underwater. You try to live underwater and you see what happens to you, unless you have a mask. You know, yes, I think, I firmly believe that there are lives, uh, uh, there are other people. I don't know what they look like. I personally remember a past life, one of my past lives in Neptune. That's the planet of water and I was a mermaid. Oh you were? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah, it was very cool. And I love water as you know. Yeah yeah. yeah. You know, I loved water. Yeah I remember that and some people remember it as well. Do you think um, do you know why your opinion or your second opinion, do you know why the government doesn't want to say anything about this? Oh, because they are saying it now. They're starting a space force, you know, and uh, uh, they will, it will come out more, yes, I know, fear. Another thing is that uh, uh, other countries might decide to go over there and take all the gold or whatever it is that's important for, for us, because we don't have the technology to get there yet. And that everybody's talking about the Third World War. I don't. It's not going to be with guns and machine tanks and machine guns and all. It's going to be technology. The technology is going to be, and you can see it now how they can already be, but but it's going to become even worse. Okay. Um. I think your career is fascinating. You've met so many different people with so many different, from, from different lives mm -hmm. and from different countries. Um, what makes you do this? What makes you go? My, my, my grandmother, my great grandmother, and because I want to help people. You know, and as you know, I'm very honest. And uh, I really feel people need to be educated and trained, you know, because they're so afraid because of their upbringing, you know, how you go to hell. Hell is down here, you know. So if you learn to accept how to control your energies, to guide you into a good direction, you know, everybody can make the earth a better world and have a better life. What I'm very worried these days is about all the drugs that are coming into the country and I think that should be taken care of. You know? And I tell everybody that smokes pot, I'm very sorry, but the pot affects your brain, whether you believe it or not or you want it or not. I think medical pot is different, absolutely. But you know the one just to go and, and then drive? You cannot control the car because you you cannot focus. Right, you can't function. Mm -hmm. That's really bad. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. Thank you for uh, talking to me again. Well, thank you for talking to me. Yes, yeah. I love it. And I wish I'll you. see you in Francisco. San Francisco, San Mateo. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see you again, and uh, I'll see you in San Mateo. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Dennis. -bye. Remember when I was a kid, and I want to age him. He, did, he said he's 84. But when I picked up Chariots of the Gods, I was absolutely mesmerized. Mesmerized by his work. Oh, by the way, there's Linda Day.
Hey, Linda, you're going to sing tonight? Excellent. Our next recipient. is somebody who has devoted her life for 40 years to the field of ufology. She's an Italo-American journalist. She puts on her own event in November. And she's none other than the great researcher, Paula Harris. Our Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. And uh, it's been 40 years that I've worked, and everybody says, when do you think disclosure is going to happen? And there is so much data that I need to thank people like George, Jimmy, people like this conference, because disclosure has already happened. So let me say that in my... Um, career and traveling all over the world, I've learned that this is a universal phenomenon. It is the most important question for mankind. And my job is just to archive the witness testimony, because all my books are word for word witness testimony. That'll be the legacy, and it's not for me, it's for your children, great-grandchildren, in the future, because we've lost a lot of our heroes. And my greatest hero is my teacher, Dr. J. Allen Hynek, with whom I worked for six years. So thank you, Alan, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> and uh, also, may I encourage women in the field, because it's been very difficult in all these years to, to do this kind of work. So we need young people, and we need more women. So thank you so much for this honor. Paula Harris is someone who will probably not need a major introduction. So I will merely say, here's the guy who keeps dying and coming back. <laughs> Daniel Grant. Take someone and you can hold them, and you can love them, and they love you, and feel safe in doing that. And that's what we're missing, you know. And so I have a funny little quick story. Me and Zachariah with with Abbas Nadim were crossing from Syria, from Syria into Lebanon, going to Baalbek. Well. 
Zachariah is a, a Russian Palestinian Jew who thought they were going to execute us. And uh, Abbas had not gotten his passport forged properly. <laughs> so they arrested all of us, but it was Abbas's passport that he didn't get the same guy to forge his as I got to forge mine and Zachariah's. <laughs> Zachariah and I became really the best of friends because we got to Baalbek and we went to the Baalbek is beautiful, and if you've never been there, if you walk up the steps at Baalbek, you understand that this building was built for people between 17 and 19 feet tall by walking up the steps. And then we went to where they cut the slabs, where one of the great the slabs that they were building this 38 feet tall building, and Zachariah stood on it. This thing is a monstrosity. It's like seven, it's like 72 tons. And Zachariah is walking around and he has, just like George says, he has that accent, that Russian Middle Eastern accent. And he kept batting his eyes. And we were so hoping that Abbas was going to get out of jail. And Zachariah says, we better go back through Lebanon. We better go, we better go back through Beirut on the way home in case we ran into Zachariah again, but I'd like to say this. I appreciate from the bottom of my heart, Robert and Kenny and Mark and the people who come together to create a place for us to gather, to love each other, to support each other, to hold each other, and to be close. Because how often in a world so divided and so driven into so many different directions, can we come and see each other and hold each other and love each other and appreciate each other? And I want to tell you something, guys. I need it. So if you get a moment in the course of this weekend and you can stop for a moment and you can focus on my heart, it needs all the help it can get. And I appreciate it. And I love you. And I appreciate it. Our next recipient and our final recipient towards a more perfect union. She is an activist. She is a helper. She has established a food bank for underprivileged and special needy. And I'm told an announced candidate for the 2020 presidential primaries and election. I shall introduce to you, I'd love to say this, Madame President, Marianne Williamson. Marianne, come on up. Achievement Award, it must mean you're really old. <laughs> but I do feel like I've lived a lifetime here in the environs of such places as this, and it's been a really good lifetime, and I appreciate it so much. And one of the things I have really appreciated everybody who has spoken up here tonight, and um, I'd like to ask all of you to join with me. I think the wonderfulness of environments such as this is that there's so many layers and there's so much stuff that's just the fun and almost the games that we do but then underneath there's something very serious going on the really that we're here to learn how to transform our lives so i'd like to ask you to join with me and let's say a prayer for daniel's heart right now let's uh do what we really all learn to do and that's use all this power that is inside us so let's take a deep breath, close our eyes. <clears throat> and we come together, having closed our outer eye to open the light that was within. And in the middle of this sacred golden light within us, we call on our divine creator for the presence of the divine physician. 
The divine physician takes many forms. To some of us here, he appears as Jesus. And now, lying on a slab before the divine physician, we see our dearly beloved brother, Daniel Brinkley. And we see the divine physician lift up his hands and pour forth the radiant spirit of infinite power. That Daniel's heart and every cell of his being might respond to the light and to the power of total healing. And all of us pour forth our love. And we see angels gather to minister unto him. And we give thanks for the miracle to come and for the chance we got to be in service to love. And so it is, we all say, amen. amen. I'm so grateful that this community has given me um, so much training and so much experience in the things that matter. And thank you for all that you have done uh, this weekend and the time that I've had here with you already to make me feel that this community is telling me to go forth and kick ass. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I might as well get used to that for you, right? Hey, so I want you to flip around and just mingle for about five minutes because Expo Got Talent is about to begin. So just turn right around. You're going to have one great show. The night continues. Change.